Okay, so what uh, what what I'm thinking is that you know because Gunny just sat in on a thing where it's it's the Air Force, like you know, and you can imagine it's an Air Force base in Turkey because that's where the, you know the Turkey you know that's where the that that's one major Air Force base is, and um, but the thing is you know the, the Air Force personnel they live off base. Some of them live off base, you know, because because uh, the, the the country is so friendly, yeah, and so you know peaceful. Well, they probably like uh, having the rest. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, uh, and, and it, that's it, it's always been understood that a lot of you know our relationship with Europe has been an economic. Hey, we send you soldiers, but but guess what? Those soldiers are consumers. Yeah, yeah, and, and they give people work in. Uh, and, yeah, that's know, that's why a lot of U.S. countries they love having military bases come in yeah. because it's like because Americans have so much money. Yeah. And, and, and they spread, and, they, and like for them, it's like, hello? Like, um, but, but Americans, they come in and they spend so much money. Mm-hmm. And they live like kings. They love it, you know? And, it's just, and, and, and the, the local community is like, yes, you know? It's like, oh, gold mine. This is, you know, this is our casino. This is the way to, you know, get money into our land. Yeah. Um, the problem is that, well, what's the native population? The native population could be any kind of religion, any kind of ethnicity, any kind of whatever. Uh, Germany, it worked out because you know, yeah, you know, the Germans were an ordered nice people, and Americans are ordered nice people. You know, they could really, they could really delve. And you know, that's why you see a lot of. Uh, well, what I'm saying is, um, you know, Army is sitting in on this class that is an introduction to, uh, you know, Middle Eastern culture. And yeah, that's because you know the, these Air Force people, they you know they're living in a peaceful place, Turkey, right? And they are learning; it, it's a different culture. So they're you know they're, it's a different people they're interacting with. Um, and it's kind of like how when you go to the store and you see you know the Muslim, you know, uh, women, and it's you're just like, <laughs> you're like you, you know, um, if you haven't you know seen that before, and like me, you know, it's just like. <laughs> but you realize, no, it's, it's it's normal. It's normal. It's okay. It's okay. You know, it's just, it, 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 hey, that's it's how you know some people live. You know, and it, it it doesn't mean anything. You know, but it's just a little little unnerving. You know, but at the same time, it, it's it's kind of good because that shows like just how our society is accepting. You know, is you know is tolerable and adaptable. You know, to allow you know p- people who they you know they they live a different a you know a difference. You know, don't whatever you call it. You know, just realize this: it's different. You can, you know, when you describe that difference. But anyways, um, the, the, people, the people in Turkey live differently, and they're Muslim. And what the Americans need to realize is that uh, these are good Muslim people. There's nothing wrong with them, you know. And they, they don't side with uh, with terrorists. And, and so, you know, and, but also we have to be wary of terrorists and stuff. But it's basically so that you can get an experience of this culture of these people. Um, that's why I was telling my dad, like, you know, when you go to Germany, uh, soldiers, you know, and the families, they, they dig it. They, they like living in Germany. You know, Germany is a bit more, you know, similar in some ways, weird ways, to America. Um, but I was just thinking about it, I realized, well, when, uh, the gunny was in Vietnam, what was his experience? What was, you know, like, what was his intro- introduction to... Vietnam and to the Vietnamese people, and I'm just thinking, well, you know, yeah, they're, he, ch- check out these gooks, you know, just <laughs> and it's just like you know, yeah, see, there's two kinds of and, and to like as you're driving through the city or you're driving through whatever, and, and you know, the guy who's your tour guide is the guy driving you. It's like basically, um, if they were stationed in the base, you know, this is your introduction to Vietnam. You know, you're out of basic training, you've arrived on a plane, uh, you're picked up, picked up at the airport, you know, either at the airport, but more than like, uh, more than likely at, like, the air base, and you're taken out to your infantry unit, uh, or your, yeah, your infantry unit, because, uh, Marine or, you know, Army, either one, but, uh, so you're taken there, and you, you start asking, you know, the, the Sarge, or the Corporal, or, you know, it could even be a specialist who went to pick you up. Uh, like, you know, what, what is this place? You know, like, well, tell me about this place. What is this Saigon? What is this and that? It's like, well, it's... And the guy who says, well, it's just a bunch of goofs, you know? And because 
and, and what I mean by gook is that you know he's going to use the most racially epithetic and just vulgar terminology and I and I, reasoning that is accepted by all these young people. And it's just that, you know, yeah, a lot of uh, American soldiers, they're, they're from places that, you know, it's, you know it's, it's all white bread. And, you know, it's like, well, we live a certain way of life. And it is, it's, we live this way, we, we feel good living this way, um, and it's a proper way to, you know, to live. Now we come to this place, and it's just, uh, for one thing, like the prostitution was legal and everywhere, so that's that's a key thing that would really like upset a lot of these you know very Christian upbringing uh, American soldiers, you know, and it's just like oh my god, you know, they would just you know shock them, but at the same time they would love it. <laughs> but uh, um, I mean, you just imagine his basic understanding is that well, here in Vietnam there's two kinds of people, uh, but the thing is they're both they'll both take your money. It's just that one will take your money looking nice while doing it, and the other one will be begging you, you know, for, you know, please, I, you know, I'm, I'm struggling. And it's just like, yeah, it's just this weird dichotomy in the society. It's like, you know, there's just, you, know, you, you have abject poverty next to uh, wealth and the caterings of wealth. So that's, you know, just something that would you know, also be kind of like just shocking. Uh, you know, what's he, like, what do you actually start getting in to the environment, because um, I mean, there's some people that some people they lived in townhouses and had like what, 50 servants on hand. Um, it was colonial. You know, that's that's the thing. It, it is because it was a French colony. But anyways, so that's you know that's Arlie Ermes. You know, in my interpretation, his interjection, his you know experience of Vietnam, and um, now. So then, you know, because you imagine, yeah, at that time, if he'd been in for about five, ten years in the Marine Corps, uh, so by that time he'd either he'd be a sergeant or maybe a corporal, you know, and um, so what would happen is he would, uh, sorry, uh, so then he becomes a uh, drill instructor, <laughs> and it's like. You know, well, he, he, what is he, what can he, and what does he need to teach these guys about Vietnam? Like, so I can imagine that, or you can imagine, yeah, they, every once in a while they tell stories about, you know, Vietnam, this, this, and that. And, because this is, uh, this happened in my basic training experience, that guys would just, would tell stories about the life that you live, you know, like when you go to Germany, when you go to, to South Korea, um, you know, when you go to these different places, you know, when you go to the Philippines, even, and, and it's like, yeah, you know, it's just, there, there are prostitutes there, you know, <laughs> and there's drinking, and there's partying, and there's having good times, you know, and, um, and there's, you know, good people, you know, and, and there's, like, these little snippets of story that they relate, and, and the thing is, you, you kind of enjoyed those stories because, especially when you're going to basic training, because it made you realize, you know, there is a reason for what we're doing here, you know, and that's what I like about the new army, is that, you know, they kind of make it, made it a bit more human, you know, it's a little softer as a result, but at the same time, it's like, you don't need to make everybody frickin' gun home. You know, you have people who just, well, you know, they may be in a combat situation, but they're not in it for combat, you know? And it's like, yeah, that's that's acceptable, you know? That's cool. <laughs> you know, keep doing that. You know? and plus, it's nice going co-ed, <laughs> you know? But, uh, um, but at the same time, it's just like, ah, you know, women, you're holding us back. Uh, but, I don't know, I'm just thinking that Arlie Army would sit in on that class uh, on Muslim culture, you know, based off of his own experience as a drill instructor, and he's an intelligent guy, you know, he's, he's been an actor, he, he's, he knows the power of teaching, and he knows that, he, you know, you got to realize, too, is that, you know, when he does the drill instructor, and he does something like that, he puts a lot of care and emphasis into it, because it's like, you know, well, this is, this is the reality of it, you know, and he realizes that you, he can use that as a teaching tool. That's why, you know, it, it's kind of unfair to typecast it, but I think uh, that's the one thing that you always can dig about Arlie Ermey, that he brings a real sense of, uh, you know, of an actor, or, or like, you know, of a character. You know, it's not, you know, he's not doing the whole, like, I'm just doing a little song and dance right now. I, I'm really serious, you know, and, and every once in a while they kind of give him some extra dialogue here and there, but it's, you know, yeah, if you wanted a guy to just tell you, like, you know, we we got to mount up, we got to go to war, are, you want to really hurt me? <laughs> so like, look, man, I'm telling you, we have to, you know, we have to fight. We have to put our lives on the line and kill, you know, or be destroyed utterly. 
and that's who you want delivering that line to you, you know, Mr. President. 